We are live, right on. Okay, so welcome to episode two of Mila and Friends, where the goal is to get you taking action towards your dreams. And today I am talking to Laurel Ann Stark. She's an entrepreneur and business mentor. And we're talking about sane self-employment. And we're gonna give you some tips on how to harness your inner badass, break free from the grind and reclaim the business you created, which this is huge, you guys. And today we're talking all about that same self-employment and how, you know, we are in this, um, it's actually kind of a dangerous field. So thank you, Laurel, for coming to speak with me and uh, sharing your wisdom and your knowledge. And mm -hmm. and let's dive right in. How are you? Yeah, oh, I'm doing amazing. I'm doing amazing. I'm so stoked to be here. And these are some of my favorite things to talk about. And I love talking to you, Mila. So I'm just jacked. I'm having a great time. How about you? Yeah, me too. Yeah, <laughs> this is like it. It's uh, it's fun because uh, we have connected over the years numerous times, and uh, we actually ha I have an old video of us. <laughs> I bet <laughs> on the I YouTube bet. channel, right? So yeah, <laughs> so there we go. Anywho, okay, so let's get started on this. One yeah. of the things that you uh, said to me just before we hopped on live here was that we're, did you know that we're in one of the most dangerous fields? And I actually agree with this and share some thoughts on what that is. For okay, you. cool. So um, what really piqued my interest around um, self-employment being one of the most dangerous jobs out there was hearing uh, about this study done, uh, came out of Berkeley actually, Dr. Michael Freeman published a study called Touched with Fire and the, conclus uh, the conclusions of the study were that over 72% of entrepreneurs are directly affected by mental illness. Now, the global average is usually one in four approximately. And his study basically stated that sort of the genetics of entrepreneurship or the genes that make you, uh, or that entre both entrepreneurship and mental illness are sort of a genetic situation. So that was really, really intriguing to me. And I ended up reaching out to him and asking him a bunch of questions about like, well, what does this mean? You know, And basically what I learned was that um, there is sort of a type of mental illness that's super common with entrepreneurs called hypomania. And as soon as he described it to me, I was like, oh my God, that's exactly what my life is. And from that point on, uh, about two years ago, when I realized that information and spoke with him, I've been doing a lot of research and um, practicing around creating a much more safe environment for uh, entrepreneurs. So um, hypomania is characterized, it's basically like mania light. And it's characterized by four or more days of extreme confidence, lots of energy, don't need to sleep, um, lots of ideas, really, really Dramatic exciting. State. Yeah. Super manic, yeah. Like, yeah. but not like dangerous. So yeah. you may engage in some high risk behaviors, um, but it's not like crazy. Like you're not gonna like jump off a cliff, but you may like bet more money, you may spend more on your Facebook ads, you may just do things that you that you would like a little bit more cavalier with choices. Right. And then four or more days of imposter syndrome and like depression and super low energy and like self doubt and all this stuff. Yeah. And that to me looks a lot like the entrepreneur cycle that a lot of people have, but don't necessarily talk about and don't necessarily know that it's um, normal. So there's that. And then also with a lot of people working from home now and like the, uh, the power of the internet to free us from cubicles means a lot of people are experiencing isolation, which can exacerbate the sort of, propensity to have these mental illnesses. So it's a very, very high risk job, very stressful job, lots of, I mean, um, stressors around like financial gain, um, the yeah. ability to pay rent, da, da, da. And then, so the predisposition to mental illness, the isolation and the actual job description all kind of ball up into a situation where we have like numerous uh, situations which make it much more risky for your mental and physical health to be an entrepreneur. And I don't think we're talking about this enough. So. That's why I'm advocating for sane self-employment to just sort of pre proactively address anything that can be dangerous to you and and take it down a notch, you know, and keep yourself safe as well as profitable and happy, hopefully. Right, right. All the above. So yeah. uh, you mentioned a couple of things there, and I'm sure that and if uh, you're watching, say hello. Um, and I'm sure that we've all gone through a point in our lives where it's felt like imposter syndrome. Yeah or we got to get this done and we're manically going and doing all of these things yeah. and uh, we're not really, and then we're spinning our wheels and then we go to burnout. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
So um, and also, you know, like it can get <laughs> like suicide. I know, I know this is a really like we're going dark here, but like suicide is on a continuum, right? It's like a, mm -hmm. it's a self harm behavior. And if you look at some of the more prominent entrepreneurs, especially lately, that have actually legitimately killed themselves, like it is a risk, right? So mm -hmm. King Spade, no one saw that coming. The founder of Moz has been really open about his depression. The founder of Reddit killed himself, like especially in tech. Um, there is a real danger there because there's substance abuse as well and a lot of pressure. So um, yeah, we need to be careful. Well, that's the thing, right? Like even if it's, how do you say it? We're behind screens and people are, are not feeling the connection. Yeah. Even though we're more connected than ever before. So I actually yeah. call it an epidemic of loneliness because yeah. we're alone, right? Yeah. And back when I met you quite a few years ago now, uh, I just told you the story is that I actually was feeling these symptoms, uh, however many years ago this was, I think it was four years or five years ago whenever we met. But anyways, yeah. I made it a, a goal of mine to go to a networking meeting every week to get out of the house because mm -hmm. I had been at home for like years. Yeah. I was all like, oh my gosh. And then I met Laurel and um, she was doing a talk. And this is one of the things that I think that we need to do is actually meet in real life. Yep, I absolutely agree with you on that. Um, the other thing about being trapped behind a screen as well is like there's all this information that's coming out around um, like internet addiction and just the the falsehood of like filters and all this. There's like uh, all these young girls specifically are having like um, sort of delusions about what they're supposed to look like because there's so much like filtery and fakery on the internet right. so there's like a lot of um like it's the highlight reel right and so sometimes we can't help it we compare ourselves like our actual lives to somebody else's highlight reel and that can cause like some serious depression and feeling like we're not doing it right or like everybody else is like doing better than we are and da 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 when in fact it's like that's not the reality and also the receptors in our brains and the way that they react to notifications and the dopamine that it creates is it can be dangerous as well. So, you know, uh, screens are very quickly taken over our lives, but the long-term impacts aren't necessary. They're just starting to become known. Um, there's another fascinating study that came out about like the secret life of teenagers and how basically mm -hmm. they just like the risks are different. They aren't going out and, and like driving crazily and like having unprotected sex and drinking underage. They're like at home on Snapchat for hours and hours and hours and yeah. while they look safer. It's not necessarily safer. It's just a different set of dangers. Right. Right. Um, so let's talk about the highlight reel that you just brought up there, because yeah. this is the thing, right? We go on Instagram and everyone's all like, oh, yeah, you know, no one's really <laughs> showing their imperfect lives. You mm. know what I mean? Like I show my sweaty selfies. But other than that, <laughs> like, I mean, really, you don't know yeah. if I'm having a good day or a bad day. And like a lot of people have these stock photos and stuff. And then we have that comparisonitis or whatever you want to call it. That. that Oh, that person is doing so well. And they're like on a yacht and stuff like that. And you know what? I think this is part of it is that, you know, a lot of people don't want the flipping yacht, but we have this expectation because they're Instagram famous or what have you. <laughs> You know, like uh, that we need to live up to this and have a Gucci bag and uh, whatever, you know, and it's like this. If it's not your deal, it's not your deal. So like we're buying into some sort of societal thing that maybe isn't necessarily our own. And then it makes us unhappy. Well, that's the thing, too, is that like this, this there's sort of like a stock set of like cultural values that I think that we internalize without necessarily examining to see if they're a good fit. And especially around entrepreneurship and there's sort of like this idea of like what success looks like. And you're like, you're mentioning with the yacht and those types of things. And like, I know for myself, like going through my journey, I really, as a younger person, I really thought that if I had all of the things that, and my life looked a particular way that it would feel a particular way. And so, you know, I, I worked really, really hard to get, you know, a body that looked a particular way and a condo that was furnished a particular way and clothing that looked a particular way and, you know, X amount of shoes and bags and all that kind of stuff. And I realized at the end of it, it was like super hollow and I still <laughs> felt like something was missing. And I think that that's, uh, can be an incredibly crushing realization. Um, if you do everything right and, and get the right things to realize that it's not necessarily the source of fulfillment. So, I think in terms of like a sane approach to self-employment is like defining success for yourself based on how it feels and really examining 
the cultural narrative and deciding if that is what success looks like for you. Because it's not necessarily always Louis Vuitton bags and like trips to the tropics. Some people just want to be able to like spend time with their kids. Some people want to be able to live wherever they want. Some people just want to be able to do what they love and get paid for it. Some people just want out of the cubicle, you know, like yeah. for everyone. Um, and then the other narrative that I think is really harmful and, and insane actually, which is why I'm preaching like sane self-employment is what it takes to get that. It's like, you should sacrifice your health, your well being. Um, it's like hustle and grind, right? Like rise and grind. You got to like get up at 5.00 AM. You got to have your morning routine on lockdown. You got to like work harder than the next guy. And like, I think that's bullshit. Frankly, I think it's dangerous. And then that like work hard, play hard mentality as well. Like if you sacrifice your health, and your sleep and your family and everything. And then you reward yourself with like partying or whatever. Like that is a recipe for absolute disaster. Uh, it is yeah. not sustainable coming from someone who's actually burnt out. It's a really dangerous way to live and it's not worth it. And so I think that it's an inhumane way to look at it and it's not safe to preach or to practice yet. It is the majority of the narratives out there around what self, what it takes to be successful as a self-employed person. Right. And um, that's one of the main reasons I do what I do is to say that like, no, that's actually not true at all. I do preach um, a daily routine and a morning mm -hmm. routine and stuff like that, but it's not set in stone. Like, I mean, you want to have a whatever, but I mean, getting up at 5 a.m. is not realistic for me. Like, it's yeah. just not. And some of the things that I do in my daily routine, I put throughout the day and what have you and you know, uh, and I allow myself some space Yeah. because, you know, here's the thing, being self-employed and working from home and, and just allowing yourself some space, like some people work better at night. Yeah. Some people work better in the afternoon. And I remember like the realization that came to me is like, whoa, one day I said, I can get out of the house and I can work somewhere else. Mm hmm. I was like blown away. It's such a simple thing, right? Yeah. And then just to switch up your environment sometimes is a really key thing. Like I just went to a coffee shop instead of uh, staying at home just to be around other humans, right? So. Yeah, exactly. And it's like about, I think it's about remembering that if you start your own business, you start it so that way you can like create the life that you want to create. So a lot of people I find they start off that way and then they end up building a business that doesn't serve them, right? They're like right. fake in their business or working too hard. They're not making enough money. They've made all these rules for themselves. Like, oh, I have to work between nine and five instead of like you're saying, like maybe I can go out and run during the day and work at night. Um, and not necessarily, and just like buying into this whole like uh, lie that it has to look or be a particular way. And that, that I think defeats the whole point. If you're going to be miserable in your job, you might as well go work for someone else and at least you'll get benefits, you know? Yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's so, an easier way to be miserable. <laughs> yeah, you know, like it's a lot easier to be employed, honestly, by somebody else yeah. and have a boss because then you know where uh, the income is coming from and you don't have to like work on marketing and learn all of the things. Yeah. And I think part of self-employment is um, – all the overwhelm that happens with people. Yeah, right. it does. And I think that that's like one of the things that I wanted to talk about, about like freeing yourself from the grind. So like one of the yeah. big reasons that this happens is because of like the, well, a bunch of different reasons, but like not defining success for yourself, like figuring yeah. out what it is so that you actually want. I just want to ask the people watching, define mm -hmm. success for yourself right now, right? Mm -hmm. Pop it in in the comments because there is no right or wrong for success for you. I mean, if, if there is no right or wrong and it, you have to know your definition, right? To be you, to be more you, the best version of you, the next level of you, mm -hmm. um, that's your definition. It's not anybody else's. It's not those Instagram pictures. It's not the Louis Vuitton bags. It's not the whatever, and, unless you want that. Then want that's it. okay yeah. too. Yeah. But I think that we put ourselves to such a high standard that um, a lot of the times we just forget what's actually important to us and what success means to us. And, mm -hmm. and like you were saying earlier, I think some of the people are just like, I just want to drop my kid 
off at school and pick them up and spend more time with them exactly. and create an, a good living for myself and work less hours. Why we usually get into our businesses is so that we can work less hours. Mm -hmm. And, and that's possibility, right? Are putting in way more hours yeah. than at a job, right? So mm -hmm. <laughs> who here mm -hmm. uh, has worked like many, many hours in a day? I have. Like, I mean, I've, I actually burnt out for an entire year once. Yeah. It ha yeah, exactly. And that's like such a normal part of the experience. And I don't think enough people are talking about it. So I'm no, glad you are. Thinking that. So thank you for bringing some awareness to this. Yeah. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about the book that you're writing? Because you have an upcoming book. Yeah, sure. So it's um, it's about uh, women work in wellness. And it's um, basically around the concept that uh, entrepreneurs have the most dangerous job out there. And if you're a woman, uh, not only like a female self-employed individual, not only are you working the most dangerous job ever, but you're actually working three jobs and getting paid for 75% of one. Mm. And the the impact of that on your well-being is basically critical. So that's the book I'm working on. I'm at 58,000 words right now. Mm. And, you know, just plugging along. I want to get it done and published and out the door and ready like for public consumption by December 2019. Nice. Um, but there's a certain part of this that is out of my control, which is interesting uh, in that sometimes I'm writing and I'm like, this is good. And sometimes I'm writing and I'm like, this is horrible. And I will never show anyone this paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that uh, I think that you'll come across that you're going to find. Here's the thing, though. When we become entrepreneurs, it's not about us anymore. Yeah, exactly. It's about the other person, right? So that's why I'm talking to you. That's why I'm talking to my friends about all of these different aspects mm -hmm. in our lives and stuff like that, right? Um, because, you know, I think once we realize it's no longer about us, we're going to just say what we think is true and put it out there and we're not going to care about anything else. So I know I have faith and I'm holding space for you that this will be a successful book for you mm -hmm. and uh, that it will touch the people that need to be touched. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's my point. It's like, I, it's not about like the perfectionism aspect of things. Cause I think that's really dangerous, but more about the fact of like, is this providing the value that I want it to provide? Is this being as concise as I need it to, con to be? Is it linking all the concepts together in a way that makes sense and is easy to consume? Is it consumable? Is it valuable? Is it usable today? Or is it just like me blowing hot air? Because a lot of, I think, <laughs> I think for me anyways, I need to write 10 pages to get one good page. So it's just a process, but yeah, definitely. It's not about me. Um, the whole point is to be um, shedding light on something that's, I don't think talked about enough. And I think hopefully being able to either change or save some lives um, is really the whole point of it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's go through a couple of tips for harnessing your inner badass. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, our society in my perception anyways, places a huge value on your intellectual capability and on uh, being cerebral and being logical. And what we're discounting, if we put that as like the number one tool that we use uh, discounting our like physical being and our emotional well being. So harnessing your inner badass for me, it's all about finding things that make you feel lit up and keeping you in a state of being lit up. So you're basically operating from the place of being your best self and being tapped in and being in flow more often than not. Nice. So I ask the people that I work with to look at what songs make them feel jacked up. When right. I did my last um, talk in front of a couple hundred people, mm -hmm. the advice I got from my speaker coach was to listen to gangster rap on the way there. And that changed everything for me. I was like, okay, Wu-Tang is my new go-to jam. Like it really, really works. So looking at clothing that makes you feel let up, music that makes you feel let up. Um, even like I have a pair of Wonder Woman socks. I have a perfume that I use and all together I can basically step into a place where I'm operating from the power of my future self or what I'm trying to bring into the world, not from what I've already done. Right. So I talk about that a lot in my yeah. class is about operating from your future self yeah not and this is one of the reasons why you and i keep connecting right yeah. we're on the same <laughs> i know right because really it's like it's it's you need to really be clear where you want to be and mm -hmm. you need to operate from that space even yes. before you get going right yes. so exactly. what would that wealthy woman within do or mm -hmm. what would that entrepreneur that's really killing it be doing today right yeah and not just doing it feeling as well. having this confidence and lit up and like yeah. happy and what do you want to talk about and what do you want to share and all of those things like that's that's the the key um to really living fulfilled right because it's all really about service 
It is too. And I think that we get so caught up in this idea of like, what are we doing today that we forget that who we're being is actually more influential on what we're doing and how mm -hmm. we're doing things and how we come across and the impact that we have on people. Because like, even just going back to marketing for a second, people buy based on emotion and they justify it later with logic. We're actually emotionally driven creatures. And to like totally. not worry about how you actually feel is I think doing yourself a great disservice. So harnessing your inner badass is really about like connecting with your highest potential and your highest self, using external cues and tools in order to get you into that space and feeling so that way you can then do and serve from that place. So yeah, like I said, music, uh, smell, um, socks, like this is one of my inner badass necklaces. Like nice, you know. Nice. Um, it just makes me feel like a rock star, and then I can I can. Well, you look myself. like a rock star with it. Oh, so there you go, right? So exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> I put it on when I'm writing, you know, and it it really really helps. So that's one of the tips that I always use in like surrounding yourself with people who are like on that same mission and consuming that material, um, whether it's audiobooks or podcasts or music or whatever it is as well, right? And like watching this interview and talking to you, this is like something that's going to keep me in that like success mindset, which is really important. Awesome. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I like to do, actually, uh, I'm just going to throw a little tip for me. Yeah. I always have a little list and it's called, I call it my love list. Yeah. And uh, it's favorite podcasts, movies, uh, quotes, things that I do for myself for self care. And if everything goes to shit, like if I'm having a parachute day, yeah. then I look at my love list because here's the thing we don't remember what yeah. we need to do for ourselves when we're in the middle of a storm right it's true so yeah. i like to have all of that stuff prepared ready i have mm -hmm. my little youtube list of like pick me up songs and whatever mm -hmm. and whatever what yeah. happens like your list of all those things so that you can just look at it pick it out and then you know go oh okay now i can feel better because literally i have like a hundred items on there so if i go yeah. through all hundred items <laughs> i'm gonna feel better eventually yeah, it's like a first aid kit for your brain. All our stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what about that? I want to ask you about that. I really feel that we have to feel our emotions, right? Yeah. So we can't bypass them. So, but with the love list, we kind of force ourselves to feel better, quote unquote. But yeah. I am a big believer in feeling the feels. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I just got asked the, that question the other day about like anger and rage. And I think that like, um, I'll speak for myself as like a woman. I think that it's been really difficult to like have a good relationship with rage. And I think that it's a very, like, it's kind of got a bad rap, you know, like, Oh, like angry and like bitchy and, and that sort of thing. Sorry if I'm not supposed to swear, but I don't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like for me also, it's been really um, like a bit of a journey to like get a good relationship with anger and like realizing that it's just an emotion. It's trying to tell me something. It usually means my boundaries have been crossed. Mm -hmm. If not that, it means I need a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. but, so, yeah. like, coping, way to, ways to cope with it that don't include like shoving it down, like screaming. Um, I personally like to scream in my car. Um, another girl, like the girl I was talking to on Facebook about it, she's like, actually, that kind of scares me. So I scream in my pillow, but it's like to just let it out, right? Yeah. I do lots of yoga. And if I've got a specific issue that I'm working on or working through rather, I will write a hate letter in big black Sharpie and then I will burn it. Never send it, just burn it. But like okay. it gets out all the like the judgments from the place of ego or from being like a hurt little kid or like just all that ego stuff and just like, let it out and let it go. Um, one of my tips, one of uh, somebody that uh, I went to one time, uh, I was so mad at something and I was like talking to her about whatever. And she's like, get a box and a screwdriver and pound the shit out mm, of it. I did that's it. great. I better, right? Yeah. Um, I only did it once. I don't know. Maybe I haven't been that angry again since, but like that was a good one. And she was like, just scream, do it in your garage or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So like, you know, maybe I seem a bit crazy in the minute, but like, you know what? It made me feel better at the mm -hmm. end of it all. Like, because you need to feel those feelings. And I yeah. am a believer in journaling. So well, it's either doing, I think you either feel it intentionally or it comes out sideways at some other point. Like, I don't know. I always see people like freaking out in traffic and I'm like, you're not handling your rage properly, my friend. <laughs> yeah. no, no, dude, you need to relax. Yeah. yeah. Go do some yoga or like go yeah. for a run or do something like that. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about breaking free from the grind. Okay. So again, that big myth of like work hard, uh, rise and grind, like work hard, blah, blah, blah. So here's the thing is like a lot of people just put more time and more effort into the things that aren't necessarily working. 
Mm -hmm. Um, we, I think have to be really mindful about how we spend our time and like eat the frog. So like you have your dreams, you have your goals, you have your things that make you feel good. And like, you got to prioritize and work on those things. So it's usually the thing you're avoiding, but instead of like keeping yourself busy, which is a societal like gold star, it's like, what about being productive? Right? So instead of like, so here's what I recommend in terms of an actionable step is like every Sunday night, write down every single thing that's in your brain. I have an app I use called to do ist. It's free. It's amazing. I just brain dump in there and then I prioritize. I'm like, okay, what right. can wait next till next year? Cause I'm like, Oh, maybe I should paint, you know, it's like, well, you could, but like, why do we need to do this week in order to make real progress towards transforming my life into the thing that I'm trying to create right. and simply working on those things first and foremost. And learning how to say no. Those are two of the biggest. Oh, yeah. Saying no is a huge, yeah. huge thing, right? Like, and, yeah. and people don't like it when you first say no. Like, because yeah. if you've always been a people pleaser and you've always been um, putting yourself second or last or whatever, and I think a lot of females do this. They're moms. Mm -hmm. They put their kids, their husband, their everyone in front of everyone. everything, even their dogs and their cats and everything. And they're exhausted, exhausted yeah. and tired. And they don't have, you know, the energy. And then they go, oh, I can't work out or I can't do whatever because they've filled up all their time with making other people's problems their priorities when yeah. really we've got to work on ourselves first and help our, ourselves first. Like the mask in a, in a, yeah, exactly. in a airplane, you got to put yours on first. Right. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And like just working on through the discomfort of, of saying no and making, you know, putting in the time for yourself to like do the things that you're trying to do um, that can save a lot of this. Like, yeah. Cause it's also difficult to, I think be effective when you don't, you're not taking proper care of yourself. And that is something that's almost like, I don't know. I feel like people who are like exhausted and so busy, it's like everyone pats them on the back for that. And it's like, that's ridiculous. It's like, what if you're well rested, well hydrated and you've like been effective and now you can like take two hours off and have a nap in the middle of the day. Like, I think that's way, way better. Oh, I do that all the time. Yeah. So I'll be honest. I'm a napper. I'm never yeah. here. Who else is a napper? <laughs> Napping. <laughs> and, and, you know, if, and I've actually readjusted my schedule a little bit lately because and talking about breaking free from the grind, so to speak, is I get up, I do a morning routine, I have some breakfast, I do the things that I want to do, and then I work for a bit, and then I'll go for a run, shower, nap, and then I work for a bit in the evening again, right? Yeah. So I'm doing like a siesta like a European siesta these days, right? And it sounds like you're really listening to your body, which is it's smarter to listen to your body than it is to listen to like some guy on Instagram talking from top of a Lamborghini about like how he like doesn't sleep. I don't know. I think that that's crazy. Unless yeah. you want a Lamborghini, then in that case, listen to that guy, I guess. Yeah. It's all pretty yeah. Cool. <laughs> I'm not really big on a Lamborghini. So that's okay. You know, I don't mind taking a ride in one, but I don't really want to own one right now. So mm -hmm. there you go. But who knows in the future I may want to, but you know, it doesn't yeah. matter. Laurel's Lamborghini does have a nice ring to it, but like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's so funny because one of my um, manifesting symbols or my success symbols or when I ask the universe for a message or whatever, and I'm like, okay, I want to see a pink car, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was in LA in Santa Monica, or actually I was in Venice Beach, um, I was driving around and I was all like, okay, uh, I want to see a pink car for whatever and, and a hot pink. Lambo went by <laughs> and I was like okay now that's a message right yeah so I was like yes this I is love it. it but anyways so it's fun to see those anyways but but at the thing if that is not what you're aligned with then you know don't be following that's the other part right is following all these people I've unfollowed so many people mm -hmm. on uh, Instagram Facebook and stuff your feed is your information it is your news mm -hmm. so what are you looking at what are you consuming and if the people are always talking about like um upsetting stuff or yeah. <laughs> like they're just not positive or they're always complaining about something like anything that makes you feel bad right that's what my role is like if it makes me feel bad i unfollow yeah life's too short you don't owe anybody anything just because you followed them in the mm -hmm. first place doesn't mean you can't unfollow them leave that Facebook group or do whatever it is you know that you need to do 
or even in person people, if they're not supporting you, then it's time to, you know, like replace those people with um, more positive and people that are uplifting. And, and if you have to, then get out and go networking and do the things where you can meet those people that uh, support you from the thing. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about reclaiming the business you created. Great. So um, one thing that I noticed a lot with the folks that I work with is like, kind of like we start creating our own businesses and uh, we get really busy with like getting work and all these things. And the next thing you know, you kind of look back and it's been a couple of years and you're like, Oh my God, I'm overworked. I'm underpaid. I'm overwhelmed. This is not what I set out to create. How did this happen? And it's because the intention to the day to day, we, we end up being reactive and that's fine. And what usually happens is like our business is usually between six months and a year behind us in terms of our own personal development. So our, our business no longer fits. And so a lot of folks that, that I talk to are like so brokenhearted when they reach this point because they, they feel like they did something wrong or whatever. And it's about the fact that like you and your business are always evolving. And in order to reclaim the business you created, like at that point, realizing that some parts, parts don't work for you and that's fine, but it's about being strategic and looking at what it is that does work, what doesn't work, both from a logistical as well as like how it feels perspective. And then working specifically to transform particular parts. And one of the ways that like just in terms of like really, really practically is like diversifying your income streams, you know, like a lot right. of people work, uh, they've got their, their time and their money is interlinked. They're working per hour. So they've yeah. got limits on their income. Um, they are not diversified enough. So they are in scarcity situation, both with mindset and physically as well. So like working to create extra income streams from maybe different areas of interest is something that I always talk about in terms of like reclaiming your business, because a lot of folks right. think like, I can only be one person and do one thing. And it's like, no, that's not true. You're a multifaceted individual and that's fascinating. And why not like sell makeup and do coaching and like sell this product and stuff as well. Cause like, why not? It's fun. So well, I, have, really um, I have multiple things as well. Like I do mm -hmm. Kindle publishing. It's not on my name though. Yeah. Like, you know, and it was how yeah, I yeah. first started in yeah. really making money online, honestly. Yeah. So yeah. I learned it. I took a program. I did it. And it's still residual income that comes in is dwindled down. I should probably revisit it a little bit, but it takes a lot of time and effort. But now it's like, it's one of those things that um, was diversifying and it wasn't my n niche or whatever to, so to speak. And now I have the deck coming out and, you know, and I have programs and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, exactly. Once you start actually creating something, one thing like a signature program or a book or, or, you know, an evergreen something or other, mm -hmm where you can just continue on selling those things, life gets easier and it actually, then you start having um, like multiple streams of income that you can uh, do and it takes you out of the time situation. Exactly. You and then know, that's when you're like so actually one -on -one coaching sessions are fantastic, but they, they shouldn't be everything in your whole business maybe to start off with that's kind of the easiest way to get started mm -hmm. but then eventually you really have to think about all these different streams like you're saying yeah. right and like making sure it works for you too right like if you're um like just for example one of the folks that i'm working with just realized that the way that he's created his business means that he is like stuck at his desk all the time um, and that doesn't work for him so you know looking at like well what are ways that we can get you out making money where you're like actually outside your house and out you know back to that isolation thing right and right. so making sure that your business actually supports your life and your well-being and your happiness and your joy is something that i think is like a radical concept because the whole sort of culture and narrative is more about like how you can sacrifice yourself so your business is successful so you can buy stuff that makes you feel empty which i think is insane yeah <laughs> that's the backwards way around it you it want to backwards. feel good yeah and, and then <clears throat> create that lifestyle that sustains you whatever that is for you exactly and like lets you nap and lets you travel and lets you uh, you know offer different things and like show up as a real person and get your needs met and be able to like make enough money and to have enough time and to like actually enjoy your life and do it on your own terms instead of somebody else's. Cause that is what I think is what sane self-employment is all about is it should rock your world. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> and, and it should like, I like to call it stoking the fire. 
Mm -hmm. Like you want to stoke the fire, right? And the only way you can stoke the fire is by adding more wood, right? So like if I'm a campfire girl, right? So that, when yeah. you like uh, stoke the fire, the only way to keep a fire going is to add more wood. So where are you passionate? And then you got to keep on adding to that area, right? So exactly. Yeah. And, and watch it grow. Yeah. I if love you, it. Uh, leave it, then it fizzles out and it dies. The fire dies. But if you keep on adding to it, then, you know. And here's the thing I think a lot of people, in particular with coaching or when they create their signature programs and stuff like that, they feel like they're giving it all away, but you can always go deeper. There's always another mm -hmm. level that you can train on, and there's always another level where you can get. Um, even deeper with people mm -hmm. uh, on whatever topic it is. So I'm, I'm and realistically, there's also like a limit. There's like transformational versus like transactional, right? So like you can consume the information, but like actually applying it. And sometimes we need help to like understand the concepts, or sometimes we need help to be accountable and those types of things. So I think even if you gave away all your best stuff, people are still going to, and that's been my experience as well. People are still going to want to work with you because it's. It's not about the stuff that you create. It's about like your being in their lives and your ability to show up and support them, mm -hmm. and like in a really authentic way. Because like you said, everyone's like, like experiencing loneliness, right? Especially like micropreneurs, solopreneurs. So to just have like a partner in your business and someone to like show up and kick ideas around with, and like have a conversation with or talk yeah. to them hard. It's invaluable. Masterminds, masterminds mm -hmm. and like accountability and um, just group programs and even like Facebook communities are great too yeah. like because there's if they're aligned with what you're trying to go for mm -hmm. um so all of those things are uh wonderful I and I just want to share a little bit of a story I actually had a design business before I had uh this business and I lost my vision for that business I was so busy trying to find money quote unquote mm -hmm that I went way off track and then it was all of a sudden I woke up just like you said and I was like working and it was like Christmas day like I'm not is that a picture you have where you're like in that pink construction hat I remember yes yeah yes. Like, oh, no. yes. and I was like oh, how did I end up here mm -hmm. right and I thought it was where I wanted to go because it's environmentally friendly. I was working on a new uh, thing. It was eco-friendly and I was like, you know, whatever, but it wasn't, it wasn't, I missed the connection with the homeowners, not the new construction, a bunch of men around on the thing and whatever. I was the only woman there and it was crazy. So really keeping your vision and holding that vision for whatever your employment is, like who are you helping? Because on the other end of these computers, on the other end of your phone, on the other end of the Instagram, there is like one single person that is reading yeah. your post. Mm -hmm. Connect to that person, right? Connect to one person. And, and, you know, I think a lot of the times we put out stuff on on all of our social media and it's like it's not authentic right not all the time but there mm -hmm. is a lot of authenticity but it's just about connecting one-on-one -on -one more than one to many and i think people forget about that well i think yeah i think you're right and i also think that it takes a tremendous amount of courage to be vulnerable like that's one thing i've been practicing the last three months specifically is like sharing when i'm having a rough day Mm -hmm. and actually putting that out on the internet and like specifically talking about what's going on with me because I feel like if one other person reads that who's also having a rough day um just to like know that they're not alone is really powerful but I will admit that it's been super challenging it goes against my instincts like my background is in marketing where it's like the mm -hmm. the instinct is to spin everything right to make it look a particular way so to just be like straight up real and be like you know what today is not a good day um right. is I think almost like a moral imperative for anybody that has any influence because pretending everything's peachy keen all the time, I think is doing real harm, especially to like the younger generation. Um, so I feel like it's our right and our responsibility to actually show up as real human beings. And uh, yeah, it's not easy, but I think it's important. I think it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. It is important to do. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not perfect all the time. That's for darn sure. So <laughs> and you do a great job of like showing up as a real person. Like you're super relatable. I love your sweaty selfies. Like, oh my gosh. I know. Oh. I, I think everyone gets sick of them and there's going to, they're uh, starting on Monday. There's going to be a uh, hundred in a row. So <laughs> yeah, so. But here's the thing. you know, what's interesting. I was just reading this book the other day and they were just talking about how like 
most um, exercise ads, they never show the models like at all looking like they've ever worked out. Like they're not sweaty. They're not like red. I go purple when I'm done working out. I'm like, this I go purple. Totally purple. red. Right? And like, I have never seen a night. My hair is like disgusting that. and like I've got sweat marks and everything. Like, oh yeah. man, I'm going to share that stuff, right? <laughs> so. Yeah. But like you never see a Nike model looking like that. And I think those images do real harm. So it's yeah. good. I think it's great. Uh, they're, actually, I'm part of a running group on Facebook. And there was like these two, an ad for, I can't remember what company. But mm -hmm. the man was fully clothed, right? Long sleeves and a, a hoodie and, and stuff. And then the girl had just a bra on and shorts. Like, yeah. come on, are yeah, you kidding yeah. me, right? You know, what kind yeah. of thing is this? Marketing has gone askew a little bit and we've got to bring it back to reality, right? So yeah, and like call out what's fake too, right? Like there's um there's a bunch of different uh, consumer groups. Like I believe it's, uh, I think it's London Drugs that's actually gonna start saying in their advertising like this model has been photoshopped or not, which is really important. Oh, I think interesting. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Because, you know, here's the thing, like my skin isn't perfect and I don't wear makeup, I just don't. I haven't worn it in years. Uh, I do have it on, I do have makeup on in one of my courses and I think I'm gonna continue doing that for my paid courses because yeah. like it, it feels like it's a success thing. It's, mm. it, feels, it feels good to be that person with the nicely done hair and the makeup done when I'm doing a professional setting. But like, mm. I mean, I'm not really a makeup person and to mm. uh, show up on Instagram, I'm gonna show up as a show up, which is generally speaking sweaty and like all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Well, that's a fantasy, right? And that's amazing. Like, I freaking love makeup. I think it's so fun. I have, you can't really tell right now, but I had like um, some pink in my hair. And then I bought this like pink uh, eyeshadow with sparkles to go with it. Cause I was like, that is just so fun. I am like loving it. And then I got like lip gloss to match. Yeah. Well, if that's, like, that's cool, like, it's good. Right? It, but it's, you know, I, I like don't sleep in it, you know? No, I know. no. <laughs> Yeah, I think you know, like, oh, sometimes on Instagram you can see like people and they're like a uh, uh, morning selfie and they're like totally done up. Like, are you kidding me? Who yeah, looks like that. I'll show you what I look like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like exactly. That. I'm good for you. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so well, that has been. This has been really, really good, Laurel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so happy you said yes to coming on and and sharing all this info with us. And, um, you know, just shedding some light on this stuff. And we talked a lot about how uh, marketing and just like get out and about and uh, and and meet with real people. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and leave your house, leave your house. Leave if you're in Victoria, BC, it, right? starting uh, March, April and May, every single Wednesday from 12 to 4, I'm hosting a free co-working event for ladies. So if you are in Victoria, BC, I know not a everyone is but if you are um you're invited it's free and it's basically an attempt to like kill isolation increase productivity and build your network so that's hey, happening i could go and visit you one day on a you wednesday should. you should well, i should do that i yeah. was like oh man I just, like, the idea just popped in my head it's not that far away yeah. i can take a ferry over yeah, yeah. I love, you love the ladies too they're really the ones who show up are just like really good people really good people so it's awesome. a good thing yeah awesome. and where can we find you laurel you can find me i'm all over the internet laurel and stark.com so for like pretty vulnerable posts uh, about like mental health and like recovery and like my bad days as well as my good days you can jump onto my instagram which is at laurel and stark um for marketing and mentorship and kind of like all kinds of free resources that i've accumulated over the last like 16 years of being an entrepreneur you can just go to my website at laurel and com, and there's a ton of free stuff there as well awesome. um, i'm on facebook i'm all over the place so yeah if you want to ask me any questions you can do that via social if you want free stuff from me you can get it on my website otherwise hopefully we'll see you on the gram and uh yeah i'm all over the internet and also in person on wednesdays Awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to set it into my calendar that I'm going to go and visit one time. So okay, awesome. I'm gonna put it somewhere. I, I I'll, have invite you. I'll just invite you on the Facebook thing right now. Yeah, I um, I have a goal for myself that I have to socialize once a week Good. for this, for this year, I actually set it to socialize, not network socialize, but, uh, but so I've been sticking to that and it's been, uh, it's been fun. But it's like it's weird because I don't actually make it a priority. So this year I've already gone out seven times. So it's like, oh, wow, right? That's crazy. Oh, for me. 
to just connect with people and stuff like that. Yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. We're going to wrap this you. up and uh, you can find the replay here on uh, here or on YouTube and uh, we'll we'll speak again, Laurel. And, oh, we will uh, sure. And thank you so, so much for shedding light on this very, very important topic. And um, you know what? Uh, we you gave so many good tips for people to stay sane and self-employment and to uh, just you know rise up to their own success whatever that is exactly well thank you so much Mila for doing this it was super fun great way to spend a, a, an hour and a bit on a or a little bit of time anyways on a Friday yeah. I love what you're up to and yeah we'll definitely be in touch and hopefully I'll see you in person in person awesome okay, okay. have a great day everybody Ooh. thanks for joining us thank you bye-bye